This is a commentary on those previously sealed up books of Revelation and Daniel. This is from the God breathed, 2 Timothy 3, 16, miraculous word of God, Micah 7, 15. Why, do we, why is it miraculous? Because the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Instead of men being spirit filled with their own gospels, men are going to be spirit filled with the word of God. In Acts chapter 2, we realize that the second coming of Christ means freedom and salvation. Now remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, that in 340 AD, because of the man of sin, Satan the man of sin, he lied to men about the fact that they could be like God. And so men gave to the world their own Bibles and their own religions. And we've been under that apostasy for 1,680 years. The heresy, the apostasy, the falling away, the spiritual dark ages of denominationalism, strange fire offered to God in Leviticus chapter 10. It was obedience to the water and the spirit of men, the gospels of men, and not the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not the one faith system from God. Christians are called out of the ways of men by being poor in spirit. And that's how we start. Matthew 5, verse 13, blessed and poor in spirits, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That's what Christianity is about, being called out of the world, out of all of the ways of men. So that's why in Revelation 18, verse 4, we read it's time. It's time to come out because of the second coming of Christ. Christians are called out of the ways of men by being poor in spirit. Matthew 5, verse 3, Acts 2, 16, 17. Remember Joel, the prophecies talked about in Joel chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all men. Now, I don't believe that we're going to have miraculous gifts and, and that the Holy Spirit's going to indwell people like he did in the first century. We're going to be able to contend for the faith, one faith system from God. And God's going to help us out. We're going to have the Bible from God. Number one, so confusion, much confusion is knocked out of the door right there. We're going to, we are going to contend for the faith together, meaning we're going to help each other, make sure we all are on the right path. We're going to be filled up with the Spirit of God. That means we're going to read and study and understand the Bible of God. And we can be blessed by that now that we have the Bible of God back. And I, I like to think of it as God maybe the Holy Spirit, removing the cobwebs out of our minds so we can think clear. We can all be on the same subject. You know, when we gather together for worship as Christians, we're going to, there's going to be reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering. We're going to make sure we deal with the sins, the problems that we have in our life because we only have 40 years to get ready for the second age of the kingdom of God. And so that's how we're all going to be on the same page. It's the spirit of God instead of the spirit of men. So this is this book that I'm showing you is a book from commentary on the God breathed miraculous word of God given and delivered once and for all times to the saints in 70 AD, Judas verse three. And it's now being restored. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12, and Micah 7, verse 15. In the Bible from God, he warned about his second coming in 20, in about 2062 AD, Revelation 22, verse 20. Of course, we're going to see it here all the way through the book of Daniel as well. The Prince of Peace is going to resume his reign over this earth. The Prince of the Power there, Satan, who's been ruling again. God wanted us to do that. He wanted us to try out the ways of men to find out they don't work. It's cause of human suffering. But now that time of apostasy is ending. The Prince of Peace is going to resume his reign over this earth and save humanity from itself one last time. The kingdom of God will once again break up and consume all the kingdoms. Of men. The moral standard of God is going to break up and consume all the moral standards of men. The Bible from God is going to break up and consume all the Bibles of men. Now, what is Gnosticism in the ways of men? We're talking about denominationalism, socialism, atheism, capitalism, environment, evil environmentalism, 
evil, fascism, and all these things. Remember, always remember that Gnosticism that have been righteous, those that are counted as righteous, and those that are evil. Those that are righteous, God saved by grace, but not at all by the Bibles and the doctrine and philosophy of Satan. Christians are the called out ones. Called out what? Called out of the world. The moral standards of men. And so in Revelation 18, verse 4, there we have it, the called out ones. And so we're now in the Christian dispensation again. There are no Christians. Remember in the first century, they're not called Christians until they loved each other with the love of God. In Antioch, they're called Christians first in Antioch. Christianity has been restored, but it's going to be a while before we have, before we're identified as Christians. Now, we're believers. We're like Cornelius. We're already involved in taking the Bible to the world in a limited commission. We're not even Christians yet, but uh, we have to start out this way. Now, for the called out ones, we need a daily briefing. First, we need to understand there's no good guys or bad guys in the world. There's only one that's good, and that's God. Now, when we're in denominationalism, we were counted as good or counted as righteous. Before the foundation of the world, God knew what decision you would make if you were under the royal law. And so he based where he put you on this earth, giving to you the best opportunity, the best for all of humanity. So he put different people, different times, different circumstances. So, so uh, people in denominationalism were counted as righteous because they would have made the right decision in the right circumstance. Only babies are aborted that would have made the right decision in the right circumstances. And so in other words, in a sense, it's like they're finding spiritual warfare as well. And they're, they're being sacrificed early. Now, now there's no, there's no good or there's no righteous men. We're counted as good and counted as righteous. Remember in Romans chapter 5, verse 13, where there's no, there, no law, there's no sins. And so God was watching out for men, even in the time when we didn't have the Bible from God. And uh, we were counted righteous or, or we were counted good if, if uh, certain criteria was met. Now that Christ is going to begin his rule again in about 40 years, where we are learning how to give up the moral standards of men. We're, we're trying to overcome Gnosticism. We're trying to overcome that which we were forced into being in, denominationalism. We were, we were forced to go to the school of hard knocks. So, and again, it's about free moral agency. We were, when we were under Satan's rule, we understood that men ruling over other men caused human suffering. But yet God put men in that circumstance in suffering so that when Christ returned, when he ruled over this world, we would understand uh, that he's the only one who can bring peace to this world. He's the only one, uh, the author of our man's salvation. He's the only one who can save humanity. And that's what's happening again. He's saving humanity again. So now then, when we are Christians again, at least after a while, soon we will be able to be, to do righteous acts and we will be able to do good things. That doesn't mean that we're good or doesn't mean that we're righteous, but we will be counted as such when we do righteous things and when we do good things. Now, that's that's important for us to understand because I, I believe that Donald J. Trump is foreshadowed, was foreshadowed by Cyrus the Great. Now, Cyrus the Great, I think it's in Nehemiah, first part of Nehemiah, we read about that he would, he basically would do the same thing as the kingdom of God, except before the kingdom of God. Basically, he would break up and consume all the kingdoms of men, and he would rule over this world. Now, you know, hopefully that's what's going on in the world today. Uh, maybe Donald Trump is, is going to defeat and overcome kingdoms of men that are causing great harm to humanity. Now, the problem is, is that, you know, no man is good and no man is righteous, and, and we need to be Christians. We need to come out of the world. It may be that Donald J. Trump needs to stay in the world to overcome the kingdoms of men before he's a, before he's a Christian. But 
we hope that for humanity's sake that we can deal with some of these issues and that we're not going to be in as bad a situation as the world was in the first century uh, when Christianity was established. Uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, when before the first coming of Christ, the first age of the kingdom in 70 AD, again, scripture talks about that being the worst times ever. Certainly when Christ was crucified, that was the worst time of humanity. So hopefully that means we're not going to have near as bad a time in Christian spiritual warfare. From a Christian's perspective, we need to recognize that we can do good things and we can do righteous things. And so we need to start picking up and doing righteous things. First thing, you know, we can do is realize we're poor in spirit, come out of denominationalism. And again, that's what Christianity is all about, being called out of the world. And that's what we read in Revelation 18, verse 4, again, the restoration of Christianity, called out of the world once again. So we need to understand that God is here to save humanity one last time. And uh, he's been in control of all these matters. He's going to take care of things. And, and if we were called to be Christians before the foundation of the world, we are going to hear the truth and we are going to hear the message of Revelation 18, verse 4. We're going to come out from among the world again. What else do we do? We need to start hungering and thirsting after righteousness. What does that mean? Study in the perfect law of liberty. And again, I'm not saying we're obligated by law at, at this point to study the Bible every day, but I think we're going to be doing so in the kingdom. And it's certainly a good idea for us to start getting ready for what life is going to be like in the kingdom. So we, we probably want to study our Bible every day. You know, it's be like a tree planted by the waters. We, we really want to get to know God's word. And, and we can know God's word now. We couldn't in denomination. You can't, you can't understand Bibles of men, but you can understand the Bible from God. It was written for us. We're looking at Revelation Daniel 2,000 years ago. Daniel about 2,600 years ago. These things were written for us. The Bible was only completed and delivered to mankind for 1,000 years. And during those 1,000 years, it is what mankind knows, understands, for a thousand years, that's what Christ, while he's in heaven, utilizes to rule over this world with. So we have to understand the Bible from God. So we need to start reading them and studying them because these prophecies, especially Daniel, this is going to get us, this is going to ground us and get us ready for to study the rest of the Bible. And so that's what we want to do. We want to look at Daniel chapter one. And see, and it's interesting because we're going to find out that. Now we're just like biblical characters. We're, we're just like Daniel, but he was just a man. We're going to find out that there's no no difference, no distinction. There's no more respect to person. There's God and there's men. And we're to love men as ourselves. And we're to, you know, when I talked about doing good things, now, now we can do good things. But you couldn't do good things unless you love people. It wasn't enough to do right things. We have to do right things with the right motive the love of God. So now we can do right things. We can do good things and we can do righteous things. And start and we start by reading the Bible. And so now we're, we're going to be find ourselves to be just like uh, Daniel. He's a his man just like us. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with the part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure's house of his God. And the king spoke to Ashpenaz, the chief of his eunuchs, that he should bring some of the sons of Israel and of the king's seed and of the nobles, young men whom there's no blemish, but who were of good appearance and having understanding, all wisdom, having knowledge and understanding, learning even with it, strength in them to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the writing and the language of the Chaldeans. Verse 5, and the king set to them the portion of a day in his day from the king's food and the wine of his drinking, even to rear them three years so that at their end they might stand before the king. And there were among them of the sons of Judah, Daniel, Mishael, and Azariah, to whom the chief of the eunuchs gave names, for he called Daniel 
Belteshazzar, Hananiah, Shadrach, and Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. Again, remember that the wisdom of men is, the wisdom of God is as the heavens above the wisdom of men. Men don't know what they're doing. Men can't guide their own paths. And so we're finding, as we read this story about Daniel so many years ago, we're finding that's what the case is. That's why men were in the Bible to show us they messed up and to show us that men couldn't do things and that men can't bring peace to the earth. Only Christ can. So the Bible is all about Christ and looking forward to the kingdom in the thousand years when Christ would reign over this world. But, you know, men deciding what kind of food we should eat. You know, maybe we can learn from some of these characters, but when we go back to the Bible from God, I think it's spiritually speaking also the tree of life because we learn from God how to do things and he protects and blesses us exceedingly when we obey him and do what he says to do. In other words, you know, that you know, there can be poison in the tree of the knowledge of good evil. And there, and there was, it's, it's poison. Men, when men do what they want to do, they suffer. But when we do what God has to do, we're, we're blessed and protected exceedingly. And Daniel laid on his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine of his drinking. So he asked of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And God had given Daniel kindness and compassion before the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who has chosen your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse looking than the boys who are in your turn? Then you would forfeit my head to the king. And Daniel said to Melzar, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hadaniah, and Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants ten days, and let vegetables be given to us that we may eat, and water that we may drink. Then let our face be seen before you, our countenance, and the appearance of the boys who eat of the king's food. And as you see, do so with your servants. And he listed them in this manner and tested them for ten days. And at the end of the ten days, their faces looked better and fatter of flesh than all the boys who were eating the king's food. So Melzar took away their food and wine that they were to drink, and he gave them vegetables. And as for these four boys, God gave them knowledge and skill in all writing and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, we're not used to that kind of thing in today's world, but we've God has hid away his face, his power, his glory, his majesty for 1,680 years. And uh, now we're going to understand the prophecies of God. That's miraculous in, in the sense it's, God breathed the word of God. The prophecies that were given 2,000 and 2,600 years ago, these prophecies, are, we now understand them. They've been hidden away all this time. And so uh, the book of Revelation and Daniel, both these are visions. And we can, we have understanding visions now. I mean, this is really, remember in Matthew 13, verse 11, the apostles asked Jesus why he was speaking in parables. And Jesus said, it's not given to them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13, verse 11. Well, it wasn't given to us to understand parables and visions for 1,600 years either. But now God is, is revealing these things to them. Acts chapter 2, starting verse 16. But this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. We're in the last days, and now we can see these visions of Revelation and Daniel. We can, we don't we're not prophets in that sense, but we can speak future events. That's what this is. And we're to pray, and if any man lack wisdom, that's wisdom from above, the Bible from God, the Spirit of God is given to the Bible by men. We're to pray, and so that's what's that's what's happening right now. We haven't had the Bible from God, from the Holy Spirit, in 1680 years, but now it's back. We can understand Daniel and, and Revelation. And at the end of the days that the king had said to bring them in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king talked with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they stood before the king, 
and in any manner of wisdom and understanding that the king asked from them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and conjurers who were in all his kingdom. So we've been in spiritual dark ages. God gave us a strong delusion because we couldn't have been in denominationalism unless we were very ignorant of the power, majesty, glory, and the Bible from God. We we just we couldn't have done it at all. I mean, the, the Bible from God is so powerful. That's why it was hidden away. And Daniel continued to the first year of King Cyrus. So we need to just keep in mind that for 6,000 years, men and women have been counted as righteous. And they tried to stand between God and men, but it didn't really work. It always failed. So when we read about all the sins of men throughout Scripture, it's all pointing to the perfect king and the perfect savior, the savior of the world, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's going to begin his rule as the prince of peace again in about 40 years. Daniel 2, verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was dreaming dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep was finished on him. And the king said to call on the magicians and to the conjurers and to the sorcerers and to the Chaldeans to declare to the king his dreams. And they came and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. And the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will reveal the meaning. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word is certainly gone from me. If you will not make known the dream and its meaning to me, you will be made no you will be made into mere members in your house and shall be made an outhouse. But if you make known the dream, you shall receive gifts and a present and great honor from before me. Therefore, Reveal the dream and its meaning to me. They again replied and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will reveal its meaning. And the king answered and said, For I know that you buy time, that on account of all, you see the thing that is certainly gone from me. But if you will not make the dream known to me, there is one law for you, for you have agreed upon the, the dream. Then I shall know that you can reveal the meaning to me. The Chaldeans replied before the king and said, there's not a man on the earth who can reveal the king's matter because not any king, lord, or ruler has asked such a thing from any magician or conjurer or Chaldean. And the thing the king asks is rare. Okay, it would be just like, think of it. If a king came to you before we understood Revelation and Daniel, and they said, explain the book of Revelation or we're going to kill you. Well, that's exactly what happened. They couldn't. There's no way they could. God is in control. He's always been in control of what men can know. I mean, it's just a simple matter of history. Uh, what went on in the world and, and what the, all these things lead to. But we couldn't know. We couldn't understand the book of Revelation. It, it was maybe because it wasn't time. Because we weren't. Christians, uh, it wasn't written to us, but now it's written to modern men, and we can understand. Then the king was enraged and angered, and he commanded all the wise men of Babylon to be destroyed. And the law went out that the wise men should be killed, and they looked for Daniel and his companions to be killed. Then Daniel answered with counsel and insight. Erach, the chief of the king's bodyguard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Erach, the king's officer, why is the decree so hasty from before the king? And Erach made the thing known to Daniel. And Daniel went in and asked of the king that he would give him time and he would show the king the meaning. Again, it's, all this proves that men can't rule over men with their own moral standards. Uh, we can't save ourselves. We can't. We can't find the answers that we need to have to, to bring peace on this earth. It, it's not in man to guide his own path. Again, but the Lord allowed men to rule over men for 6,000 years because of free or let moral agency. We need to understand the lesson that the ways of men do not work. Daniel 2, 17. Then Daniel went to his house and declared the thing to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might pray for the mercies of God in heaven about this secret. 
that Daniel and his companions should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Secret is an interesting word. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, you read about hidden revelation. The, the Bible from God was hidden from men for 1,680 years. But that can also be translated sacred revelation. So way back here in Daniel, the prophecy of Daniel, we see the same kind of thing that's going on. God, God allows who he allows to understand truth. And again, he's not a respecter of persons, but he knows if you would not obey it and if you would not be subject to it. And so, you know, he's not going to cast his pearls before swine. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel 2.20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the time was in season, and he calls kings to pass away and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. Again, we've been in spiritual dark ages. We are coming out into spiritual enlightenment exceeding abundantly greater than we ever could have imagined, Ephesians 3, verse 20. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells in him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made me know what we ask of you. For you have revealed to us this, the king's matter. Then Daniel went unto Arioch, whom the king had chosen to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said to him, do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the meaning to the king. Daniel 2.25. Then Arach quickly brought Daniel in before the king and spoke this to him. I found a man of the captives of Judah who will make the meaning known to the king. The king answered and said to Daniel, are you able to reveal to me the dream which I have seen and its meaning? Daniel replied before the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot be shown to the king by the wise men, the conjurers, the magicians, or the stargazing ones. And so we live in a world right now that's falling apart. And if you'll notice that men think they still think that we can overcome this and we can save ourselves. <laughs> but you know, the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, all that show us that we can't save ourselves. It took checks and balances because men, you know, they don't have the love of God and, and men respect their families and their friends and their feelings more than they do others. I mean, it's not in man to guide his, his way through this life or to bring peace on earth. We, we don't have that ability. We can't save this world. That's why we need God. And that's why the Lord, of course, is saving humanity one last time. Daniel replied before the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot be shown to the king by wise men, the conjurers, the magicians, or the stargazing ones. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and makes known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. And so for us, the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel both are going to be revealed to us about the end times and the second coming of the Lord. Amazing. We will have a lot in common with Daniel. He was just a man. So are we. But we can see the visions from Daniel and Revelation. The Lord God Almighty had you in mind when these words were penned by the Holy Spirit 2,600 years ago. Your dream and the visions of your head on your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came on your bed. What should happen after this? And he who reveals secrets makes known to you what shall occur. But as for me, this secret is not revealed for me, for any wisdom that I have more than any living man. And so Daniel's, we're just like Daniel. We can understand visions. It's just, just a man. But God's in control who can understand vision, but so that the meaning might be made known to the king and that you might know the thought of your heart. Again, all men are created equal. The only ranking is, is God above me. 
So Daniel interprets the dream. You, O king, were seen, and behold, a certain great image. A great image stood before you with a brilliant brightness, and his form was dreadful. The head of this image was of fine gold, his breast and his arms were of silver, its belly and thighs were of bronze, its legs were of iron, its feet were partly of iron and partly of clay. You continued until a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, and the silver, and the gold were together broken into pieces, and they became like a chap of the summer threshing floor. Okay, that simply means that Christianity destroyed all the Gnosticism of men. Now, that's why Jesus was, was murdered, because he claimed to have all authority. So when the kingdom of God came, it would break up and consume all the kingdoms of men. We're going to read that here below. So that's, that's what we see here. This image, this dream... It's a dream that you, just like Daniel now, can interpret and understand. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is a dream, and we will tell the meaning of it before the king. You, O king, are the king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you the kingdom, the power, the strength, and the honor. And wherever the sons of men, the animals of the field, the birds of the sky dwell, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold, and in your place shall arise another kingdom lower than yours, and another third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule in all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, insomuch as iron crushes and smashes all things. As the iron that shatters all these, it will crush and shatter. And as to that you saw the feet, and the toes were pars partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of iron, because you saw the iron mixed with the clay of the potter. And as the toes of the feet were partially of iron and partially of clay, so the kingdom shall be partially strong and partially fragile. And as you saw the iron mixed with the clay of the clay, they shall be mixed with the seed of men. But they shall not adhere to one another, even as iron does not mix with the clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. Why? Because it was a not, it was Gnostic. It turned Gnostic, the religions of men. And the religions of men crucified Christ because he claimed to have authority. And so in 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed. The kingdom of God started breaking up and consuming all the kingdoms of men, starting with Jerusalem. And the kingdom shall not be left up to other people. It shall break in pieces and destroy all these kingdoms and shall stand forever. So the kingdom was established. The thousand-year kingdom was established in 70 AD and would last forever. Well, there would be an, an intermission. Apostasy, that's what we read in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. A break in the kingdom. When defeated, it was just hidden away from humanity. In total, will be about 1,720 years. Now, the kingdom's going to endure forever. That's why in the Bible, we don't need different translations and versions and editions of the Bible. It was given once and for all time to the saints in 70 AD because the kingdom's going to last forever. It's the Bible of the kingdom. It's going to last forever. Once the last enemy death is destroyed, then the kingdom's going to be turned over to God the Father. The great God has made known to the kings what shall occur after this. And the dream is certain. And the meaning of it is trustworthy. You think God's going to keep his promise for the second coming? And then Daniel is promoted. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and did homage to Daniel. And he commanded an offering even to offer incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Your God truly is a God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal this secret, then the king made Daniel great and gave many great gifts to him. And he made him ruler over the province of Babylon and chief of the perfects over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel asked of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the fairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Thank you for watching us today. We have commentaries, paperbacks, hardbacks, zip drives, EPUBs available. I want to share with you the pearl of great price. The question we should all ask is, what is good and evil? 
Objective moral truth from God is good, and subjective moral truths and lies from men are evil. Let God be true and every man a liar. For 1,680 years, the Lord has hidden objective truth in the book of Revelation. This has allowed mankind to test out the subjective moral truths of men. We're starting to come out of the spiritual dark ages and are restoring the perfect law of liberty. www.lulu.com slash spotlight slash time of the son of man.